Hello, I'm Jenny Rake Morona, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this midweek meditation for the community and friends of the community at Emmanuel Presbyterian Church. I'd like to invite you also to um, take a look at our website, IPC Tacoma. Dot org, just to see uh, the variety of ways you could connect with us over the next days and weeks if you'd like to, to see what we're up to um, in our very lively and engaged conversation. You'd be most welcome. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, a practice that the adult nurture class and I have been exploring over the last um, three or four Sundays. It's called Camino Divina and was developed by a woman who's an author. She lives out on Whidbey Island and this is her book. It's called Camino Divina, Walking the Divine Way. And we have been having a wonderful time exploring this spiritual practice, which is a combination of uh, walking meditation and Lectio Divina, or Sacred Reading. So during this practice, we um, have been carrying with us in our minds and our hearts a phrase or a word or an image from sacred literature. We've been using the text that she's been choosing, a whole variety of things, but you can use any text that um, has deep and sacred meaning to you. Scripture, poetry, um, prose of any sort that has some meaning and, and that you find um, is speaking to you in some way, some deep and meaningful way. Um, a little bit of background about the two practices that are combined in this, in this one practice. So walking meditation is a spiritual practice that's used by many contemplative um, traditions around the world. And the purpose is simply to slow our minds down, to quiet our minds um, using the rhythm of our body as we walk, as we move, using the five, our five senses to help us stay right in the present moment, um, to keep our minds focused on our steps, on our breathing, on the sights around us, the sounds we may hear, um, in order to open a space in our minds and our hearts to listen more deeply to our own souls and to the ways that the Spirit may be speaking into our souls. Lectio Divina, um, I know many of you are familiar with this practice, sacred reading, is a way of listening very deeply. It's a devotional practice for listening deeply to sacred text, scripture, uh, poetry, prose, as I said, any text that may have a deep meaning for you so that you may listen again for how spirit is speaking through those texts and into your heart. There traditionally are four movements in uh, Lectio Divina. The first is Lectio, and that is um, a way of sort of reading taking a bite of the scripture. Gail Mamano, the author of Camino Divina, calls Lectio Divina uh, feasting on sacred words. So the Lectio um, phase she thinks of as uh, taking a bite of the sacred literature. Um, Meditatio is the second movement, and she thinks about that as chewing it up or chewing it over, mulling it over, listening for what calls to you in the text. Oratio is the third movement in Lectio Divina. It's a deep listening to what the text means to you in that moment of your listening. How is the Spirit speaking directly to you? And then finally, Contemplatio, uh, taking the word or the meaning of the text into our very selves, into our bodies, making the sacred word part of ourselves. Another kind of the final portion of feasting is making the word a part of our very selves. The um, adult nurture group has taken one phrase per week for the last three weeks, and we're going to do one more week on Sunday. We've walked with those phrases in our minds, kind of savoring them as we've walked um, from time to time during the week. I wanted to also note that some people who are not, you know, uh, big on walking are also doing this practice by adding intention to any daily 
activity that you may do, washing the dishes, weeding the garden, folding the laundry, kneading dough for bread, any of those kinds of activities are ripe for this kind of um, spiritual practice, this Camino Divina. So I would invite you to consider that. Once we've had our week to uh, walk with the the texts, then we come together on Sunday mornings and we've been discussing our discoveries and the questions that have arisen. And we, we're thinking especially about how these texts have spoken into our experiences of the um, COVID-19 quarantine time and into the ways we are experiencing and understanding and trying to find our places in the racial reckoning that is happening now since the murder of, of George Floyd in Minneapolis. It's been rich, really rich. And so I wanted to offer you a chance to try this spiritual practice for yourself at home. So I've chosen a text for us for today, and I'll give you a little background, and I'll read that text three times, as in as is the practice in Lectio Divina. The text is uh, Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. It's the story of the feeding of the multitudes. So just a little context about this text first before we hear it. Um, the writer has set this story of Jesus feeding 5,000 people um, right in in the immediate wake of the death of John the Baptist. Uh, John was Jesus's cousin. His mother was Elizabeth, who was cousin to Jesus's mother, Mary, and the two women were pregnant at the same time. Jesus, or John later baptized Jesus at the start of Jesus's ministry in the River Jordan. Since then, both John and Jesus have um, been getting a lot of attention. Uh, leading up to this, where this story happens. They were getting a lot of attention. John always pointing to the ministry of Jesus and Jesus traveling all over the um, region, uh, preaching, teaching, and healing folks and gathering quite uh, a following, people following him from place to place to hear what he had to say or bringing uh, people to be uh, healed by him. So none of this, um, the important part of this context is none of this pleased the power, the power structure in place at the time, uh, which was the government of Rome that had been occupying Israel for quite some time. Um, they did not like grassroots movements among the Jews, and they found some very brutal ways to put those movements down during the, the many years that they occupied um, that region. So in the verses just before the text that we're going to hear, Jesus learned that John had died. Uh, he had been arrested and beheaded. And Jesus has just learned this. And you can imagine that he is um, grieving and exhausted and feeling pressed to discern, to know with some certainty what he and his disciples will do next. So he takes himself away from the crowds where he has been ministering, um, preaching and teaching and healing. He takes the, himself away from the crowd uh, to find a quiet place to think and to pray and to rest. So in a sense, um, he takes himself on something of a Camino. And that is, that's where our text begins then, the text that I would like you to consider today for your Camino this week. Again, the text is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. I'm going to read it three times. The first time I read it, I would invite you to listen for any part of this text, a word, a phrase, an image, one sentence that really stands out to you, that um, perhaps that shimmers in some special way, calls out to you to be attended to. So that's the first time. The second time I read it, I will ask you to listen again, maybe especially for that word or that phrase, and what it means to you. How might the Spirit, how might God be speaking particularly to you uh, in this text and in, in the phrase that has called to you? The third time I read it, I will ask you to consider uh, 
what might the invitation be in this text? How might God be calling to you um, in this moment uh, as you read this text, this, this text that's very familiar in a lot of ways? Um, so those will be the three prompts as I read this. And if you'd like to um, make some notes, I'd encourage you to just stop for a minute and get a piece of paper and, and a pen so that you can make some notes um, along the way if you'd like to. So here now this word of um, the sacred word for us this day. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And then Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. The disciples gave them to the crowds. All ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. So was there a word or a phrase or an image that called out to you? Take just a moment. And now hear this passage again, listening especially for what does this passage mean for you today? How might God be speaking through this passage to your heart? Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men as well as women and children. So we'll take just a moment to consider meaning. God speaking, Spirit speaking directly to you. And a third reading. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, 
This is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. So this time, just a moment to Consider how God may be speaking to you, inviting you, what the invitation to you may be in that text. Make a note of that, and we'll just close this time. Um, I'd like to just invite you to walk with that uh, text this week or do any other activity that you would like to add some intention and mindfulness to. Uh, with that text and see what may be speaking into your heart this week. And then maybe take a minute to think of one or two things you could do to respond to the invitation that you're hearing in that text. And finally, then I'd encourage you to share that, uh, what you've learned this week with somebody close to you in your life. Uh, see if you you might share uh, together what you're each hearing. The, this invitation reminds me of Mary Oliver's instructions for, for living, uh, for instructions for living. She says, pay attention, be astonished, and tell about it. And now this blessing. Now may you move from this moment and every moment in beauty, knowing yourself to be loved and care, cared for and belonging to the one whose love will never let us go. Be in peace.